ایک سورہ فاتحہ کی درخواست ہے جناب محمد طفیل ولد مراد علی سید محمد آغا اور مرحوم ناظمین فاطمہ کے ارسال ثواب کی اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ اللذی لیس لأولیته ابتداء ولا لأزلیته انقضاء وانحسرت الاوصاف عن کنہ معرفته وردعت عظمته العقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد البطحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولو الله لصاحة الأرض بأهلها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم أولم ينظروا في ملكوت السماوات والأرض وقال أيضا فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الشريعة والی والطریقت افعالی والحقیقت احوالی والمعرفت رأس مالی والشوق مرکبی والخوف رفیقی والفقر فخری وبه افتخر على سائر الانبیاء صلوات This hadith of the Holy Prophet, which is narrated in Kitabul Amali and Masabihul Qulub, we find our beloved Prophet is saying, which I am paraphrasing these narrations in my own words, that Sharia is the combination of my statements. Sharia mere aqwal ke majmue ka naam hai. What tariqatu af'ali and tariqat is the combination of my deeds. Wal haqiqatu ahwali and the reality is the conditions of my soul. Wal ma'rifatu ra'su mali. Or ma'rifat mera kul sarmaya hai, zindagi hai. Kul sarmaya hai. And ma'rifat, an in-depth recognition of Allah, is the entire asset that he owns. 
and washauqu markabi and ishtiyaq and being eager towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the vehicle that he rides that's my vehicle wal khawfu rafiqi and the fear of Allah is my companion wal faqru fakhri and feeling the need towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a matter of pride for me wa bihi aftakhiru ala sa'ir al anbiya and it's upon this that i feel proud over all the prophets of god that was just the gist of the translation of this beautiful hadith of our holy messenger but this is the zahir and apparent meaning of the hadith just like for the holy quran we isna asharis believe that the holy quran has a zahir an apparent meaning and a batin a hidden reality behind the apparent meaning and wala zahrihi you know inna lil quran zahran wa batnan wa li batnihi batnun ila sab'ati abtun and quran has an apparent face and a hidden reality behind it and for those that hidden reality there are further hidden realities up till seven and my teacher Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli Hafadullah in his tafsir was saying if those seven meanings were not different from each other there was no reason for the Ma'asum to say there are seven hidden meanings so just like for the Holy Quran we believe that it has a zahir an apparent face and a hidden reality and several hidden meanings behind it and the Holy Quran has of course a mutlaq and muqayyid and mujmal and mubayyin and aam and khas and muammim and mukhassis similarly for the hadith of the prophet in ahlul bayt salam we rightfully believe that the hadith of the holy prophet in ahlul bayt salam also has a zahir and a batin and a mutlaq and a muqayyid and a mujmal and a mubayyin and an aam and a khas and a muammim and a mukhassis and no one has the right to interpret the hadith of the holy prophet any mutlaq of the hadith without searching how our fuqaha say without searching completely and thoroughly about all the muqayyidat first and foremost just like for the quran we say no one has the right to interpret any of the mujmal of Quran without searching about the mubayyin of the Quran just like we say no one has the right to interpret any of the arm or muammam of Quran without searching about the khusus and the muammim similarly for the hadith of the holy prophet we believe and practice the same no one has the right to interpret any hadith of the prophet in ahlul bayt unless and until he has the comprehensive knowledge of all those terminologies and its implications so it's not easy it's not an easy task we find that for the zahir of quran my teacher was saying in the tafsir if allah look see what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said certainly it's an honorable book inside a hidden book no one can touch it except the purified just like my teacher was saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to touch the zahir of Quran you need to have the heart of the zahir but if you happen to want to touch the batin and hidden realities of Quran you must have the taharat of the batin and qalb and your soul so the beauty of Islam brothers and sisters is that the ball is always in our court we can achieve whatever levels we would like to achieve by the cleanliness of our soul and by the taharat and tasqiyat to nafs so the more you purify your spirituality the more you clean your souls and your hearts the more you will be rightfully given access to the button of the holy quran and the same is perfectly true about the hadith 
So anybody who wants to understand the wahir of the hadith and the batin of the hadith altogether, he must understand that we need to have the taharat of the qalb. This is not an ordinary statement. We are talking about the statements of the biggest personalities Allah has ever created. So we need to have the taharat of the qalb to understand the batin. And when it comes down and zeroes in to the taharat of the qalb and the cleanliness of the soul and the taharat of the batin, so there has to be, no one can be like the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt. That's very, very obvious for every believer. None of the Prophets can, can, can become parallel to any member of the Ahlul Bayt, who are we? That's already obvious. But we need to make ourselves followers of the footsteps of the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt and make ourselves resemble in our spirituality and character with that of the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt as much as we can. That's why all these Nurani, illuminous teachings have been protected for the sake of our guidance. So we need to make ourselves resemble, we make ourselves mushabih in our character and spirituality with that of the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt and Salam. So now it, it comes down to the character and spirituality. So there has to be a similarity between a follower and his actions and deeds and with the Ahlul Bayt والسلام, with the Holy Prophet So that's why we find one of the amal of Rasulullah was Salat and prayers. And he used to pray so much. He used to pray so much that Allah revealed the verse in the Holy Quran. قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِسْفَهُ أَوَنْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا Addressing, asking Rasulullah to decrease his standing in the night. Make it half or further less. طَاهَا مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى Which means, يَا طَاهِرًا مِنَ الْعُيُوبِ وَلَا وَيَا هَادِيًا إِلَىٰ عَلَّامِ الْغُيُوبِ O oh, you who is free from all the faults, and O oh, you who is a guide towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the Allamul Ghuyub, Ma anzalna alayk al Quran al tashqa. We did not reveal this Quran, didn't send down this Quran upon you, so you end up in hassles. So Allah asked his beloved messenger to decrease his prayers. He used to stand up so much in the middle of the night that his feet used to get swollen. How much he used to pray? And it's not just praying. Prophet used to love the prayers. There's a whole world of difference, brothers and sisters, between praying and loving to pray. इसे मोहब्बत ए नमाज नहीं कहा जाता ये तो अपने सर से बला टाली जा रही है अपने सर से एक वाजिब को अदा किया जा रहा है पैगंबर अकरम ऐसे नहीं थे पैगंबर अकरम मोहब्बत करते थे नमाज के साथ तो वन ऑफ द एक्शंस ऑफ द होली प्रॉफिट वाज प्रेयर्स अनदर एक्शंस ऑफ हिज वी नीड टू मेक आवर सेल्फ्स रिजेंबल विद द प्रॉफिट इन अहलुल बैत नोबडी कैन बी लाइक देम बट एट लीस्ट नीड टू फॉलो देयर फुटस्टेप्स there has to be some resemblance because our actions will be weighed by, you know, because the Holy Prophet has already said to Imam Ali salam, Anta mizanul amal. So we understand the walayat of Amir al muminin is the criteria and yardstick to judge all the actions of the entire humanity. Everything of ours will be judged by the walayat of Amir al muminin salam. How much? What is the value of my prayers? So my prayers are, will be put on the other side of the scale and the, and the prayers of Amir Mumin Islam. Is there any resemblance in my actions with that of Ahlul Bayt Salam? One of the actions of Rasulullah was fasting. You know, some people are such rubba sa'imin لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعَ وَالْعَتَشْ 
so many of the people who are fasting, nothing returns back to them out of their fasting except hunger and thirst. That's what they get at the end of the day. A woman was fasting and she did ribat. Prophet has the ilm al-ghayb. When she came to see Rasulullah and said to the Holy Messenger, Ya Rasulullah, I am fasting. Prophet said, you are hungry. You are not fasting. On the next day, the same story got repeated. She was fasting and she did rebirth and she came back. She came, showed up and she came to see Rasulullah and expressed in front of him that, Ya Rasulullah, I am fasting. And Prophet said the same remark, you are hungry, you are not fasting. It repeated several times till one day the narration says she didn't do ghibat and then she came to see Rasulullah and Prophet said to her, today you are fasting. So this is what our scholars have said, that the fasting has three levels. The first level is the Somul Awam, fasting of the regular people, who just think that as soon as you stop eating and drinking, that's what it takes for fasting. You are fasting because you stop eating and drinking, because your stomach is fasting. That's what the Awam Nas think. But that's not what the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt consider to be fasting. This is not fasting in the real sense. And the second level of fasting, which is the real fasting in the dictionary of the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt is the fast in which every part of your body has a share in the fasting. Where our eyes should also be fasting that I do not utilize this blessing of Allah to perform the harams that my Mawla Amir Mumineen has said this is a haram. So there has to be some similarity between the muwali, between the follower and the mawla. And when the, my mawla says it is haram and I commit the same sin. So my eyes has no share in the fasting. My hands also need to have a share in the fasting. So I do not perform any action through the hands which Imam Ali salam, the Holy Prophet has declared to be haram. So that the hands also have a share in the fasting. My feet need to have a share as well. So I don't walk to places which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us through his representatives, the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt salam, that this and this thing is haram. So if I happen to walk to places where Allah made it haram and I am fasting, I must understand that this is no fast in the dictionary of the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt. Likewise, the rest of the parts of the body, the ears, and the tongue, every part has to have a share in the fasting. For this kind of fasting, our scholars have said the hadith of Rasulullah applies on this type of fasting that a sawmo junnatum minan nar. Fasting is a shield from the hellfire. When does your fasting shield away the flames of the hellfire away from your body? When every part of your body had a share in the fasting. That's where the hadith applies. Not on the first level of fasting, with the awamun nas thing as soon as they stop eating and drinking. That's okay. That's what it takes for fasting. The hadith doesn't apply. We don't have the right to misinterpret the hadith either. I already told you about some of those technical terminologies that apply before we can even apply the hadith. And in the presence of Rasulullah, there was a woman who used abusive language. She used abusive language towards her servant in the presence of Rasulullah while she was fasting. And Prophet said, come eat food. Oh Rasulullah, I'm fasting. Prophet said, what type of fasting? So, this type of fasting is not considered to be fasting. The Holy Prophet said, fasting is not from the eating and drinking. That means that's not the only thing that you need to take care of in the fasting, that you just stop eating and drinking and you think that's it. And the third level of fasting 
which belongs to the Holy Prophet in Ahlul Bayt and to the awliya of Allah. That is the level of fasting for which, for which our scholars call it Siyamul Fiqh, fasting of the thoughts. That means our Prophet in Ahlul Bayt do not even think of anything which displeases Allah. What to talk of thinking about the sins? They don't even think about the makruhat. What to talk about the muharramat? They don't even think about anything other than Allah or anyone other than Allah, which we call ghairullah. Not just the muharramat and makruhat. Actually, the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt never even think of anyone or anything other than Allah. So now you realize the greatness. Where does the greatness? There is no unfair favoritism going on from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we as Shias believe our holy prophet and Ahlul Bayt are the greatest of all. You know, there is no unfair favoritism because the holy prophet and Ahlul Bayt earned their azamat and greatness for what they did for the kind of ubudiyat and worship towards Allah that they performed. They have earned their azamat because of what they have performed. There is no unfair favoritism taking place. So we find that the real fasting is where there is no thought of anyone coming in your mind other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything, anything other than the mind. Prophet was like that because his qalb was only and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amir al-Mumineen al-Islam was like this. His qalb was only and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's how his call was. See, that's why we call, we use two words in the Arabic language, nida and najwa. Nida in Arabic means calling somebody. That somebody may be standing far away from you. Isn't that right? And then we raise our voice and we call the person. But the next word, the other word we use for calling in Arabic is najwa or munajat. Najwa and munajat in Arabic means when you are whispering to somebody, you don't need to shout. When do you whisper? When you don't want anyone or anything to share your conversation. Isn't that right? When you want to share that what you are doing in a sargoshi way, you are saying to someone in the face of someone. Why are you saying to someone in the face of someone? That's why you want to hear no other person to listen to your face. So when do you whisper into the ears of somebody? When do you whisper to somebody? Because you don't want anyone or anything else to be a partner in that conversation. Now look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where he has said. So now look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he has said, Al-Musalli yunaji rabbahu. Namaz padhne wala apne parwadgaar ke saath munajat karta hai. The Holy Prophet didn't say in his hadith that the person who is praying, Al-Musalli yunaji rabbahu. No. That's not what the Prophet said. Prophet said, Al-Musalli yunaji rabbahu. That means the person who is praying, he's talking a whispered talk to his Lord. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that close to him. He doesn't need to shout. He doesn't need to call in nida. He, all he needs is munajat, a whisper. That's exactly why our orafa say that anybody who has hubbud dunya, and the love and attachment towards this temporary material world is not entitled to do munajat with Allah because there's a third, third entity present in your qalb. Whenever there's a third entity present in your qalb, you are ineligible to do the munajat. Agar dil mein dunya ki mohabbat hai, to ab ye jaan lena chahiye 
کہ پھر رسول و اہل بیت علیہ السلات والسلام کی محبت اب اللہ تعالیٰ کی محبت جو کہ ایک ہی بات ہے رسول و اہل بیت کی محبت اور اللہ کی محبت ایک ہی بات ہے اس میں کوئی فرق تو نہیں ہے نا you know the love of the prophet and ahlul bayt is exactly equal and same to the love of allah and the love of allah is exactly equal and same than the love of ahlul bayt without any difference because they are the mazhar and the most perfect mazhar and reflection of every single name and every single attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without exception salawat So we find that those people who have the love, hubbe uh, dunya, the love affair and attachment with this material world must understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already informed us, Ya ibn Adam, bi qadr ma yamilu qalbuka ila dunya, O son of Adam, the more your qalb gets inclined towards this dunya, ukhrajo mahabbati an qalbika, I'm going to take my love out of your heart. اب جتنی جتنی دنیا کی محبت سماتی چلی جائے گی دل میں جان لینا چاہیے کہ پیغمبر اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کی حدیث ناؤز باللہ کبھی جھوٹی نہیں ہو سکتی جن کو مکہ کے بیٹیاں دفن کرنے والے مشرق بک پرس بھی صادق و امین کہا کرتے تھے ان کا قول کبھی جھوٹا نہیں ہو سکتا تو اب پیغمبر تو فرما کے گئے ہیں جتنا جتنا تمہارا دل دنیا کی طرف جھکتا چلا جائے گا اللہ نے کہا اخرج محبتی من قلبک یہ مضمون روایت ہے اتنی میں اپنی محبت تمہارے دل سے نکالتا چلا جاؤں گا معلومہ کہ رسول اہل بیت کی محبت اللہ کی محبت دل سے نکلتی چلی جائے گی جتنا دنیا کی طرف بچھے چلے جا رہے ہیں جھکے چلے جا رہے ہیں دوڑے چلے جا رہے ہیں دنیا کے پیچھے مالے دنیا کے پیچھے فَإِنِّي لَا أَجْمَا کیونکہ I'm not gonna combine حُبِّي وَحُبَّ الدُّنِيَا فِي قَلْبٍ وَاحِدٍ عَبَدًا I'm not going to combine my love and the love of this dunya in one soul so we must understand so that's the rule of the house Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to change and bend upon his principles because of our ignorance or because of us liking it or disliking it or believing in it or not believing in that. The teachings of the Prophet and the teachings of Ahlul Bayt are not left up to the mercy of a bunch of people accepting or not accepting or believing and buying the argument or not buying the arg argument. The teachings of the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt shall remain the same forever. And no power on earth can challenge the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. So we find that their heart was totally engaged with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All they used to see when somebody came and asked Imam Ali alayhi salam, Hal ra'ayta rabba ka kya aapne apne parwadigar ko dekha hai? So kya jawab diya tha mere mawla ne? Amir al-Mumin al-Islam replied, Lam a'bud rabban lam arahu. I never worshipped a Lord that I did not see. And then he said, Lam tarahu al-uyuna bi mushahadat al-ayyan. It's not the eyes, that means it's not the physical eyes that see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bal ra'athu al-qulub. Oh, walakin ra'athu wa tardeed minni. Walakin ra'athu al-qulub bi haqaiq al-eeman. Actually, you witness Allah through the realities of your iman and faith. And Imam Ali al-Islam has also said that مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا وَرَأَيْتُ اللَّهَ قَبْلَهُ وَبَعْدَهُ وَمَعَهُ وَفِيهِ میں نے کسی شیئے کو دیکھا ہی نہیں جب تک اس شیئے کو دیکھنے سے پہلے بھی اللہ کو دیکھا Whenever I saw something, I saw Allah before seeing that thing and after seeing that thing and along with that thing and in that thing Salawat That's, that's how Imam Ali was. So all he used to see, he was Allah. That's, that's, that's all he used to see. And that's how the Holy Prophet was. He was so much in, into the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the time of Azan used to come, instead of asking Bilal, come forward, say the Azan, what does our Holy Prophet said? What did he say? He said, he, he said, Arihna ya Bilal. بلال ہمیں راحت بخشو کمفرٹ اس او بلال انسٹر آف آسکنگ بلال حبشی ایڈ دی ٹائم آف ازان 
Did Bilal come forward and say the azan? What did the Prophet say to him? Arehna ya Bilal. Hame rahat bakhsho Bilal. Comfort us, O oh Bilal. What does it mean? That when, the, when Bilal is going to say the azan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be mentioned. And because of the zikr and mention of Allah, the qalb and soul of the Holy Prophet used to get satisfaction. Now you know how much the Holy Prophet used to have the love of Allah in his qalb. And the same Holy Prophet, when he was taken on Mi'raj, and when he came back after Mi'raj, we find that when somebody asked him, Bi'ayye lisanin, you know, this is the this is the hadith which is narrated by Ayatullah Sayyid Ali Khan Hyderabadi, one of our very great mujtahids from Hyderabad, who has written the first ever tafsir of Sahifa Sajjadiyah Riyadus Salihin, and uh, uh, and. Uh, Riyazul Salikin. And in this tafsir, um, first ever tafsir that he has written, uh, you know, uh, Riyazul Salikin or Riyazul Salikin, uh, one of the two. And in the tafsir, in, the, in this book, he has mentioned in the muqaddimah five ahadith from Rasulullah, and this is one of those five. And that's what he has said that when the Holy Prophet came back from Miraj, and somebody asked him, in what lisan, kis zaban mein aapke ne aapke saath shabe miraj mein guftugu ki? In whose tongue your Lord talked with you in the night of miraj and ascension? And the Holy Prophet replied, khatabani be lisan aliyin. Salawat par yun. Allah talked to me in the tongue of Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam. And that's where the Prophet said, uh, that Allah said, that ana shay'un laysa kal ashya. I'm a thing unlike other things. La uqasu bin nas. I can't be compared with the people. Wa la usafu bin shubuhat. Nor can I be held parallel with the imaginations. You cannot think of Allah with your imaginations. When I, and then the Holy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Khalaqtuka min nuri. I created you from my nur and light. Wa khalaqtu aliyan min nurika. And I created Ali from your nur. Ittala'tu ala sara'iri qalbika. I am aware about the hidden realities of your qalb and soul. Falam ajid fi qalbika ahabba min aliyan. And I did not find in your qalb anyone more beloved than Ali فَخَاتَبْتُ كَلِسَانِهِ بِلِسَانِهِ كَيْمَا يَتْمَئِنَّ قَلْبُكَ So that's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he didn't find anybody more beloved in the eyes of Holy Prophet than Imam Ali السلام, that's the reason he talked with Imam Ali in, with the Holy Prophet in the lisan and tongue of Imam Ali السلام, so that he can become satisfied Salawat <laughs> So we find the same Rasulullah in whose heart the most beloved person in the eyes of Rasulullah is Imam Ali alayhi salam. The most beloved person in the eyes of Rasulullah is Imam Ali alayhi salam. And the same Rasulullah when he is basically loving Imam Ali alayhi salam that much, my question to you, how can Rasulullah love Imam Ali alayhi salam that much unless and until Imam Ali's love is exactly equal to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Prophet used to see nothing and have nothing in his qalb other than Allah. Isn't that right? They didn't never used to think of anyone or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same Prophet who has nothing in his qalb other than the love of Allah, now Allah says in his statement to the Prophet that the most beloved person in your eyes is Imam Ali alayhi salam. So we find the love of Imam Ali alayhi salam is exactly equal to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat. So, so it is important to understand and remember, brothers and sisters, 
that everything has a zahir and a batin. The kulli zahirin, batin. It's not just one or two. Everything of the universe has a zahir and a batin. And it's human to make ourselves reach the levels of perfection and kamal in afsani, level of spiritual perfection, that we become enabled to see the batin of the things around us. This is, this is human. It is not human for a person to just see the zahir. You know, this is a wall and that's a ceiling and that's a fan and that's a light. This is what an animal can also see. Isn't that right? What distinguishes us as human beings is that we have the potential and the power to see the batin and hidden realities of the things around us, which the animals have no access to the batin. That's what distinguishes us. This is one of those things that distinguishes us and, and the animals. So that's what, you know, we find that every person has a batin. And we are carving our batin, our hidden reality of the soul, through the kind of belief system that we believe in, and through the type of amal that we practice, and the, through the type of the akhlaq and morality that we have in our soul, we are carving the face and form and surat of our spirituality. And we will be resurrected on the day of judgment in the same form and face that we have carved with our beliefs and our amal and our morals. We be rejected with of those faces. See, is dunya me to aate waqt humse nahi poocha gaya ke aapko gora rang pasand hai ya aapko kala rang pasand hai ke aapki abru is tarah ki honi chahiye aur aapki aankhe aisi pasand hai aapki aapke daant kaise hone chahiye aapke hont kaise hone chahiye ye to humse nahi poocha gaya we were not even there to be asked. Isn't that right? But it is perfectly in our control, brothers and sisters, to determine our face and our complexion and our features for the face and form that we will have on the Day of Judgment. And that, that depends on our beliefs and our amal and our morals. When my Mawla Imam Sajjad Salam's companion had said to him, talking about those bunch of people, those people who were doing the tawaf of Kaaba, and this companion said to Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, ma akthar al-hajid wa aqall al-zajid. Haji kitne saare hai, shor sharaba kitna kam hai. How many hajis are present, you know, whereas the noise is so less. And Imam Sajjad alayhi salam replied back with the statement that was exactly opposite to what he said. Imam Sajjad alayhi salam said that ma akthar al-zajid that means how less are the hajis and how much is the noise the guy was shocked you know because Imam Sajjad is saying something contrary to what you can see with your eyes can you deny what you are seeing with the eyes yes the answer to that is yes you can deny about the reality of what you are seeing because, brothers and sisters, we are seeing the zahir and apparent face of the realities only. We are not seeing the batin and the hidden realities. So what we see may not be true. So there is a room to deny. And that's where Imam Sajjad, when he asked him to look between the two fingers of the Imam, and then the guy starts looking between the two fingers of the, of the masoom, and he discovered there were foxes and wolves and pigs rotating around Kaaba, and there were very few humans. It's not that Imam Sajjad -Islam converted out of a miracle. He converted the people into those foxes or wolves or pigs or whatever animals. No, my Mawla doesn't stand in need of converting anybody. That's the reality of those people, which we, were, we failed to see, which the companion failed to see. But the Imam -Islam has no hijabat, no curtains on his qalb to block his vision to see the realities of the universe because he sees the realities of the universe 24 7 365 remember the dua of rasulullah where he had already asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma arinil ashya kama hiya oh my lord make me see the things the way they are that means not the way they seem to be so we understand the things around us seem to be in a form which may not be true. 
Whereas the Holy Prophet is asking from Allah that make me see the things the way they are. So when the Holy Quran says, حرام کی کوئی ایک قسم تو نہیں ہے نا جب حرام کا تذکرہ کریں تو لوگ چھوٹے کہتے نہیں ہم تو کوئی غیر زبیہ نہیں کھاتے ہم تو حلال گوشت کھاتے ہیں غیر زبیہ ہی فقط کوئی حرام تھوڑی ہے شریعت کے اندر والد صاحب کا انتقال ہوا اور ایک بھائی ساری میراس پہ قبضہ کر کے بیٹھ گئے باقی بہن بھائیوں میں قرآن کے معین شدہ حصوں کے مطابق میراس کو تقسیم نہیں کیا یہ بھی حرام کھا رہے ہیں اور کھلا رہے ہیں اپنے بیوی بچوں کو حرام سے غیر زبیہ گوشت تھوڑی ہے تاہوتوں کی نوکریاں کر رہے ہیں ظالموں کی چاپلوسیاں کرتے پھر رہے ہیں نام اہل بیت کرے رہے ہیں نام پاکیزہ ہستیوں کا لے رہے ہیں دن کی شان میں آئے تھے نازل ہوئی اور شرابیں بیچ کے تبرک بانٹ رہے ہیں مولا امام حسین کے نام پہ جو مرکز تہارت ہیں ان کے نام پہ نجس تبرک بانٹا جا رہا ہے ملازم فرمایا آپ نے تو حرام تو سب ایک تھوڑی غیر زبیہ گوشت تھوڑی ہے تاغوتوں کی نوکریاں بھی کر رہے ہیں ظلم کی چاپلوسی بھی کر رہے ہیں ٹھیک ہے نا علیب نے یقین کا نام بھی استعمال کر رہے ہیں بھئی علیب نے یقین نے ازن لیا تھا میرے مولا اپنے زمانے کے ولی اور مولا امام قاسم علیہ السلام سے یہ بھی تو بیان کریں ادھوری باتیں کیوں بیان کرتے ہیں ادھوری تعلیمات کو ادھورا بیان کرنا بھی خیانت ہے یہ بھی تو بیان فرمائیے نا کہ علیب نے یقین جب تاغوت کے دربار میں کام کر رہے ہیں ہارون رشید لانت اللہ علیہ کیا تو میرے مولا زمانے کے مولا زمانے کے ولی امام قاسم علیہ السلام سے اذن لیا تھا اور عربی زبان میں اذن و اجازے میں فرق ہوتا ہے اس لئے کہ اذن عربی میں اجازہ اس کو کہتے ہیں کہ جو عمل کے بعد بھی لیا جا سکتا ہے جبکہ اذن اس پرمیشن کو کہتے ہیں کہ جو عمل کرنے سے ہمیشہ پہلے لیا جاتا ہے جسے ہم انگریزی میں کہتے ہیں پرائر پرمیشن پرائر تو دے ایکشن بیفور یو پرفارم دے ایکشن ایف یو گو اہیڈ اینڈ ٹیک دے پرمیشن فرسٹ بیفور ڈوئنگ دے ایکشن دس پرائر پرمیشن از کالڈ ازن ان عربک تو علی ابن یقین تو زمانے کے ولی و مولا سے ازن لے کر کام انجام دے رہے ہیں تو آپ بھی زمانے کے امام امام زمانہ یا ان کے نائب سے ولی فقی سے اجازت دے کے کام کیجئے تاہوت کیا کر لیجئے آپ بھی کون منع کرے گا آپ کو میں یہاں تو مانتے ہی نہیں ہے راضی فرمایا آپ نے تو اصول شریعت کو let's not try to reinvent the wheel there is a system in place already there in the شریعت of امام صادق علیہ السلام so what I was saying to you is that that basically it is very important for a person when the holy Quran says اِنَّ الَّذِينَ Let's go back to the ayat I was talking about. اِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ الْيَتَامَ ظُلْمًا Please pay attention. Those of the people who are eating, we learn in the light of the verse, those who are eating up the money of the orphans out of zulm and oppression, they are eating fire. And Quran is a book of haqiqat and reality. If Imam Mahdi alayhi salam was present here, He would have seen, let's suppose somebody usurps the money of an orphan, purchases a piece of bread, and he's consuming this loaf of bread, which he consumed, which he usurped from the money of an orphan out of zulm and injustice, and now he's consuming this loaf of bread. The Quran is informing us that this is not the piece of bread. Instead, it is fire. And Quran is a book of reality. And if Imam alayhi salam was present here, he would have seen this piece of bread in the form of fire, which we can't see because of the same hijabat and curtains that we have on our kalb that block us to see the realities of the universe. Malakut us samawat wal arz. Malakut Arabi mein kehte hain, batin ko lugatan. Yani asmano aur zameen ke batin ko dekhne se hum qasir hain. کیوں کیونکہ اتنے دبیس پردے پڑے ہوئے ہیں روحانیت کے اوپر ہر گناہ کا ایک پردہ ہے ہر گناہ کا ایک پردہ ہے حب دنیا حب مال حب شہوات حب النساء حب النوم نیند کی محبت 
مختلف ریزن ہیں جس کی وجہ سے انسان حرام کام کرتا ہے طرح طرح کی محبتیں اٹیچمنٹس ہیں اسی لیے ہم کہتے ہیں نا سکرات الموت کا وقت آتا ہے تو بڑی بہت پین ہوتا ہے when a person is passing away in the final moments when the soul is taken out of his body it's a very painful you know scene and very painful moment for the guy why is it painful do you think a malakul moth is an unprofessional guy he doesn't know how to handle his job he has done the same job millions and millions of times isn't that right Millions and millions of humans have been, their souls have been taken out already by him. He has an extraordinary amount of experience. So there's nothing unprofessional for, from, on his part. So why the pain? Our Orofas say the pain is because of those attachments that we have gained in the life of this world. The guy loves his money, his material belongings. اس فیم شہرت بعض لوگوں کو اہدوں کی بڑی پرواہ ہوتی ہے حب منصب حب جا حب شہرت حب النساء حب الشہوات ویریس ٹائپس آف اٹیچمنٹس آف دس ورل سو وین دا سول نیڈس ٹو بی ٹیکن آؤٹ آف دا ورلڈ آف میٹر اینڈ ٹرانسفر سی دا ڈاکٹرز ہیو اے ڈفرینٹ ڈیفینیشن آف ڈیتھ یو نو وٹ ایور دا پلس فیڈس اینڈ دا ہارٹ بیٹ اسٹاپس آف وٹ ایور But the knowledge of ilm al-kalam, the knowledge of Islamic belief system, we, the Isna Asharis, in our Islamic belief system, which we call ilm al-kalam, have a different definition of death. We define death as infisal al-ruh and al-badan, separation of soul from the body, wa intiqaluha, and transferring of the soul from the alam al-nasut, from the material world, to the alam al-malakut, to the world of hidden realities. So now the soul needs to be transferred from the world of matter to the world of hidden realities. It's a different stage of life. How can the soul get, get, get transferred as long as it is attached with the world of matter? Can you fly with all the attachments with the world? That's like a space rocket is departing. So you need to detach all those things which are holding up the rocket. Isn't that right? So as long as we have all these love affairs and attachment with the material belongings of this world, of course the Malakul Moth needs to detach each and every single attachment of our soul first before he can take out the soul from the body to so transfer it from the world of matter to a different world of hidden realities. And that is very, very painful. Because we have been attached since long years. We don't want to give away, give up our attachment. Laza Farmai, you have said, why is it happening in the time of Sakarat al-Maut? This is not the time of these attachments. Let's read the book. Oh, Allah, 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 So, the and ishtiaq and being eager towards Allah is is the markab and vehicle that Prophet rides. Inna li ma'allahi waqtan la yasa'un fihi la yasa'uni fihi malakun muqarrab wa la nabiyyun mursal. Nabiyyun mursal wa la malakun muqarrab. That's mazmoon al riwaya. So a Prophet had specific time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No Prophet, no Messenger, and no Prophet and no close angel of Allah can come in the middle. He had so much ishtiyaq towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Prophet always felt his need towards Allah. We are always needy towards Allah. But it's just that we sometimes we stop feeling the need towards Allah. If we feel the need, we would never misbehave. The reason why we misbehave because we stop feeling the need towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fear of Allah, this the Prophet said, well, khawfu rafiqi, fear of Allah, fear is my companion. The fear doesn't require sins, our scholars. Prophet has no sin. Our holy prophet and her have no tarkul awla. Like some of the other prophets of God who performed tarkul awla, something that was better to be avoided, but they didn't avoid. Our prophet and her bed never performed and never even thought of any tarkul awla in their lives. What to talk of the sins? It's unthinkable for them to even think about the sins. So we find that the holy prophet was so much into the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and similarly was his son Imam Hussain alayhi salam who when the battle was about to be started by Umar ibn Sa'ad 
Imam Hussain al Islam asked Abu al Fadl Abbas to seek some time because Imam Hussain wanted to spend one further night in the ibadat of Allah. Because Allah knows, Imam Hussain al Islam said, Allah knows, inni uhibb salata. Allah janta hai ke mujhe namaz se muhabbat hai. Mere maula Imam Hussain ko bhi namaz se muhabbat thi. Sari zindagi maula aap namaz padhte rahe. Aap namaz ko qaim karte rahe. Magar ek raat mazid muhulat chahi ja rahi hai. Kyunki mere maula ko namaz se muhabbat thi. Na ye ke fakat namaz padha karte thay. Hum ziyarat wohi nahi kehte. Ashadu anna ka qad sallayta. Nahi, ye nahi hum kehte. Ashadu anna ka qad aqamta. میں گواہی دیتا ہوں کہ آپ نے نماز کو انسٹال کیا رہتی دنیا تک پوری کائنات کے اندر جو جو شخص نماز پڑھ رہا ہے اس کا ثواب میرے مولا امام حسین کو جا رہا ہے ساری نمازوں کا ثواب پوری کائنات کی نمازوں کا ثواب حسین ابن علی کے کو جا رہا ہے کیونکہ حسین ابن علی تو نماز کی ثقافت کو قائم کیا ہے رہتی دنیا تک یعنی نمازیں مرہون منت ہیں حسین ابن علی کی ولایت کی اگر حسین کی ولایت نہ ہوتی تو نمازیں بھی باقی نہ بچتی لہذا فرمانا ہے حسین نے نماز کو قائم کیا ہے نمازیں تو حسین کی مرہون منت ہیں ورنہ کھوکلی نمازیں بغیر ولایت کے تو دونوں طرف ہو رہی تھی عمر ابن سعید لانت اللہ علیہ اس طرف جماعت پڑھا رہا ہے اور میرے مولا اس طرف نماز پڑھا رہے ہیں ساری نوازیں مو پہ مار دی جائیں گی بغیر ولایت کے ٹھیک ہے نا تو بعض لوگ اسی لیے بعض لوگ بغیر ولایت کو امپورٹنس نہیں دیتے ہیں انشاءاللہ پھر اللہ نے موقع دیا تو پھر کبھی اس موضوع پہ بھی عرض کروں گا بھی میرا اس وقت یہ موضوع نہیں ہے بعض لوگ ولایت کو امپورٹنس نہیں دیتے ہیں جبکہ یہ ذہن میں رکھنا چاہیے کہ ولایت اہل بیت اصل میں روح ہے تمام کے تمام اسلام کی لہٰذا ضرورت اس بات کی ہے کہ ہم توجہ دیں امام حسین علیہ السلام کی محبوب تھی نماز نماز ان کی محبوب تھی اور جب پیغمبر اکرم کے زندگی کا آخری وقت آیا تو آزاداروں ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ پیغمبر اکرم بڑے مظلوم ہیں آپ نے کرتاس و قلم مانگا مگر آپ کو کرتاس و قلم نہیں دیا گیا اور اس کے جواب میں پیغمبر اکرم کی توہین کی گئی ان میں حاد رجل یحجر یہ شخص تو ہزیان بکرا ہے نعوذ باللہ پیغمبر اکرم کی توہین کی جا رہی ہے اور دوسری طرف جا کے خلافت و کرسی کا بٹوارہ ہو رہا ہے پیغمبر اکرم کے جنازے کو چھوڑ کر پیغمبر اکرم کی تکفین و تدفین کو چھوڑ کر دنیا داری ہو رہی ہے مگر میں عجی چاہتا ہے کہ دس بستہ پیغمبر کے حضور میں ارز کروں کہ یا رسول اللہ آپ کے انتقال کے وقت آپ کے وسیع اور خلیفہ میرے مولا امیر المومنین تو آپ کے سرحانے موجود تھے نا آپ کا سر تو مولا کے آغوش میں ہی تھا آپ کی دختر گرامی جناب فاطمت الزہرہ تو موجود تھی آپ کے گوت کے پالے مولا امام حسن اور امام حسین تو آپ کے قریب موجود تھے نا یعنی آپ کا گھرانہ سارا کا سارا آپ کے پاس موجود تھا مگر یا رسول اللہ آپ کے نواسے کا جب وہ وقت آیا لا یومکا یومکا یا عبا عبداللہ مولا امام حسین آپ جیسا دن کسی کا دن نہیں جو سختیاں میرے مولا نے دیکھی جو مسائب و مشکلات میرے مولا نے برداشت کیے وہ کسی کے لیے نہیں آئے یقیناً میرے مولا نے فرمایا تھا کہ انی لا ارا اصحاب انی لا ارا اصحاباً اوفا من اصحابی یعنی میں اپنے اصحاب سے زیادہ باوفا کسی کے اصحاب نہیں دیکھتا یقیناً میرے مولا آپ کے اصحاب سب سے زیادہ باوفا صحابی تھے مگر میرے مولا وہ وقت بھی تو آیا کہ جب سارے بنی حاشم کام آ چکے جب سارے اصحاب ایک ایک کر کے شہید ہو چکے اب حسین ابن علی یکو تنہا کھڑے ہیں اب کرملہ کے میدان میں فاطمہ کی گود کا پالا اکیلا کھڑا ہے اور صدائے استغاثہ بلند کر رہے ہیں حل من ناصرن ینصرنا 
अरे कोई है जो हमारी मदद को आए हल मिन मुगीसिन युगी सुना अरे कोई है कि जो मदद करे हमारी हल मिन जाबिन हरमे रसूल अरे कोई है जो रसूल के हरम का दिफा करे इमाम हुसैन यको तनहा रह गए यहाँ तक के सईद इब्न ताउस ने नकल किया सईद ताउस फरमाते हैं कि जब मेरे मौला ने किताल के बाद तवक्फ किया अब जो थोड़ी देर के लिए मेरे मौला ने तवक्फ किया और ये सारी फौजें पलटी अब अजादारो जिसके पास तलवार थी उसने मौला के ऊपर तलवार से हमला किया जिसके पास नेजा था उसने मौला पे नेजे से हमला किया और जिसके पास कुछ नहीं था उसने मौला के ऊपर पत्थर मारा यही जब मैं ताउस कहते हैं इस असाबहु हजरों मौला के की पेशानी है मुबारक पर एक पत्थर आके लगा दम अनजब हेती ही मेरे मौला ने ये मजमून रिवायत है मेरे मौला ने अपने कपड़े को थामा ताकि पेशानी के खून को साफ कर सके और यही वो वक्त था इस आशा बहु सहमुन मसमूम ये वो वक्त था कि जब मेरे मौला के कल का निशाना जहर आलूद तीरे से शोभा से बनाया गया तीरे से शोभा जहर आलूद मेरे कल मौला के कल का निशाना बनाया गया यहाँ तक के यहाँ तक के उसके बाद रिवायत कहती है कि मेरे मौला मौला ने तीर को बाहर निकाला फखरज दम के नहूमी जाब अब खून ऐसे निकला जैसा फवारा बहता हो अब जो मेरे मौला ने तीर को निकाला है ना अपने दिल से तो ऐसे खून निकला जैसे फवारा बहता हो तो उसके थोड़ी देर बाद फिर मेरे मौला ठहर ना सके जुलझना के ऊपर जुलझना को भी पता चल गया कि मेरे मौला के अंदर अब इतनी हिम्मत नहीं रही अब जमीन करबला पे आने वाले है तो जुलझना ने भी अपने घुटने टेक दिए ताकि मेरे मौला का जिसम आसानी के साथ जमीन करबला पे आ जाए मगर आजादारो अभी तो जमीन करबला पे नहीं आया अभी तो मेरे मौला का जिसम तीरों के ऊपर मोहल्लक है अभी तो जमीन करबला पे नहीं आया अभी तीरों के ऊपर मोहल्लक है और यहाँ तक के रिवायत में नकल किया गया आयतुल्ला शेख जाफर शूस्त्री कहते हैं कि कई मरतबा मेरे मौला ने अपना चेहरा उठा उठा के खयाम हुसैनी की तरफ देखा एले हरम के खेमों की तरफ देखा बाद ने नकल किया कि मेरे मौला ने फरमाया या शिया दीन वकुन तुम फकून के पैरो अगर तुम्हें आखिरत के ऊपर तुम्हारा इतक नहीं है बल्फाज दीगर तो, तो खातन का क्या कसूर है मैं तुम्हारे साथ लड़ रहा हूँ तुम मेरे साथ लड़ रहे हो खातन का यानी क्या कसूर है यानी उनके ऊपर हमला ना किया जाए जुरान से तो मेरे मौला को इतनी परवाह थी कि अहले हरम पे अशकियाना अशकिया दर्राना ना घुसने पाए क्या में कई मरतबा उठा के चेहरा देखा और मौला चेहरे के बल जमीन पे गिरे अजादारो वो वक्त भी आया आपने पढ़ा होगा कि जब कोई इंसान मर रहा होता है तो उसके सीने पे बोझ नहीं डालना चाहिए क्योंकि अगर बोझ डाला जाए तो उसको बड़ी तकलीफ होती है यह आदाब में बयान किया गया है और रिवायत क्या कहती है वह शिमरो सदर ही शिमर मौला के सीने पे बैठा हुआ शहजादी जैनब तिल्ला जैनबिया पे मौजूद थी ना शहजादी जैनब तिल्ला जैनबिया पे मौजूद है और वो मंजर देख रही है कि शिमरे लहीन मेरे मौला के सीने पे बैठा हुआ है रीश है मुबारक को थामा हुआ एक हाथ से आप जानते हैं ना मेरे मौला की रीश मुबारक सुबह आशूरा के वक्त सिया थी और असर आशूर होते तक बाज उलमा ने नकल किया कि मेरे मौला की रीश मुबारक सफेद हो चुकी थी न जाने कितने गम पड़े हैं अभी अब्दुल्ला हुसैन पर तो एक हाथ से मेरे मौला की रीश मुबारक को थामा हुआ पसे गर्दन से जमा कर रहा है शहजादी जैनब ने उमर अपने साथ को मुखातब करके कहा अयुक्त लो अबू अब्दुल्ला वह इनका तंजर अरे मेरा माँ जाया जमा किया जा रहा है तू खड़ा तमाशा देख रहा है
گلشن میں اب کیسے بار آئے اجڑ نہ کوئی ایسے اجڑ نہ کوئی ایسے دین آپ کی پکارا آئے دارا تیرے گلشن میں اب کیسے بار آئے دارا تیرے گلشن میں اب کیسے بہار آئے زہرا تیرے گلشن میں اب کیسے بہار آئے کب تک مجھے جینا ہے وعدے پہ تیرے حق ہے ان آنکھوں میں حسرت ہے
السلام عليك يا صاحب الدم الساقبة السلام عليك يا صاحب المصيبة الراتبة لقد أصبح كتاب الله فيك ما جورا ورسول الله فيك ما ترى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا آقا حضرت أبو الفضل الأباس ابن أمر المؤمنين السلام عليكم جميع الشهداء كربلاء وسيران كربلاء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا غريب الغرباء السلام عليك يا معين الزعفاء والفقراء السلام عليك يا شمس الشموس وانيس النفوس السلام عليك أيها المدفون بأرض التوس السلام عليك يا مغز الشيع والزفار في يوم الجزاء السلام عليك يا سلطان العرب والعجام السلام عليك يا أبو العسان يا علي بن موسى أي الرضا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا صاحب الأسوى الزمان ألمان 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 السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا إمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرده وسهو مخرده وزهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات الله مومنوں مومنات ہمارے آسے بھائی جن کی بھائی شدید علیل ہیں میں آپ سب سے گزارش کروں گا کہ ان کی صحتیابی کے لیے اور جملہ تمام مومنوں اور مومنات جو بیمار ہیں ان کی صحتیابی کے لیے ایک بلند تر سالوات کل کی مجلس ٹھیک اپنے وقت مقررہ پہ یعنی بعد نماز مغربین شروع ہو جائے گی مغرب کی نماز ٹھیک ساڑھے سات بجے ادا کی جائے گی اور مولانا عباس ایلیا صاحب ٹھیک ساڑھے آٹھ بجے زیبی ممبر ہوں گے تمام مومنین اور مومنات سے پابندی وقت کے ساتھ شرکت کی گزارش ہے برائے خوشنودی امام زمانہ بلند طرز علاوات